This is Vesso from Chaos. In this video, we will go through the process of shading a scene in 3ds Max in V-Ray, trying to achieve a stylized cartoon look, like a comic style. First, we are going to take a look at how to set up the shaders for the environment objects. Next, we will go through the use and settings of the V-Ray Tune environment effect, which we will use to create an outline around the geometry objects. After that, we are going to look at the V-Ray Tune material and its settings while shading the vehicle. Finally, we will go through the process used in the shading of the burger that sits on top of the van. With all that being said, let's get started. Here in 3ds Max, we have our scene that needs to be shaded. We are going to use the V-Ray Tune material in the process of shading the entire scene in this tutorial. This way, we should be able to have a 2D cell shaded or cartoon look by the end of the video. Let me start the interactive rendering to see what the entire scene looks like. Currently, there is a standard V-Ray gray material applied to everything in the scene. All of the objects have been modeled in 3ds Max except for the girl character and the dog, which has been created using ZBrush. In terms of lighting in the scene, there is a dome light with a sky HDR texture that we can see in the background, and a V-Ray sun. I found that using directional light sources with the V-Ray Tune material gives the best results. The V-Ray Sun is a directional light source, so that should work nicely in our case here. Let's start by shading the hills in the background first. In the Material Editor, I'll grab a V-Ray Tune material and assign it to all of the hill objects. I've placed all of the hills, road and trees in a layer of its own and named it accordingly. I also did the same for the rest of the scene objects. This way, it's easier to find stuff and navigate the scene. It's not something that must be done, but I think it's good practice and can save time. We can change the main color by changing the diffuse. We can also plug in a texture map to introduce some color variation. I have a texture map of some sort of grass here, which would work. Let's go ahead and plug it into the diffuse slot. It's kind of big and it needs to be tiled more times. Let me bring in a V-Ray UVW randomizer node and plug it into the texture mapping source. In the coordinates rollout, we can play with the tiling and offset values until we are happy with the result. Also, we can turn on the stochastic tiling option and increase the range of the scaling from 80 to about 150. Maybe change the steps values too. Finally, we can color correct it a little bit. Maybe slightly change the hue and saturation, and also make it a little bit more contrasty. Looks great! Now, to emphasize the cartoon look, it will be great if we add an outline around the hills. To do so, we need to go under Rendering, Environment, to open the Environment and Effects window. If we scroll all the way down under the Atmosphere rollout, we can add a V-Ray Tune effect. I'll just name it V-Ray Tune Hills. In the basic parameters, we can change the way the outline appears, things like color and thickness of the line. I'd like to make the line dark green. I'd also like to make it thicker. That could be done by changing the pixel's value. We could also use the scene units, in this case centimeters, by switching to the world mode. Let me increase the pixel's value to something like 5. I've noticed on the left side of the image, one of the hills is not getting an outline. That is because it's just not steep enough. We can easily fix that by adjusting the normal threshold parameter from its default value of 0.7 to a higher value. Great! I'd like to have the outline effect with those specific settings applied only to the hills. We can have many different outline effects in the same scene applied to different objects. At the very bottom, in the Exclude Objects section, we can include or exclude objects that the effect will be applied to. We can do that to individual objects or layers. Since I've organized my scene into layers, I can take advantage of that and switch to layers. Then simply choose the layer containing all of the hills and set the type to include. This way only the hills are getting the outline effect. To make the outline look more natural, like it's been hand-drawn, we can change how uniform the line appears. To achieve this, we need some variation in the opacity parameter. 
So if we take a noise node, for example, and plug it into the opacity, that should do the trick. Let me increase the noise contrast by bringing the noise threshold values closer together. And also, let's increase the size significantly. Now, the effect is visible only in certain areas. By changing the black value of the noise, we can bring back some of the areas where the line was completely erased. Now that looks much better. Following the exact same approach, I've prepared the material for the trees. Let me go ahead and assign it to all the trees in the scene. The material is of multi subtype, one material for the trunk and one for the leaves. Also, let me apply a very tune environment effect to everything else in the scene. For the road, I'd like to give the impression of motion. So we can use a texture of stones that I have here and stretch it out. Let's bring in the stones texture and plug in a V-Ray UVW randomizer node to it. Enable the stochastic tiling and stretch it on the U. Also, I'd like the lines to be spread out a little bit, so I'll decrease the V value to let's say half. Great! It would be nicer if there is some variation in the color on the sides of the road though. That is easily done by getting a V-Ray Comp text node and multiplying our texture with some color. I'll go for bright green. And then everything goes into a composite node masked by a gradient ramp node. Also, I can tint it a little bit by changing the white color portion of the ramp. This way it's going to be the original grey concrete in the middle of the road and a greener version of it towards the sides. As a final touch, we can enable depth of field to the camera so we can focus the viewer's attention on the main object. We can set the focus point by right-clicking in the frame buffer and choosing the set focus distance option and then simply click on the object we'd like the camera to focus on. Okay, now let's create the material for the van. Again, I'll start with the default V-Ray Tune material and explore some of its settings and capabilities as I go along. First, let me set the diffuse color to a bright yellow. Below the diffuse color slot, there is a diffuse ramp. This ramp controls the diffuse color based on the amount of light it receives. Having that in mind, I can easily change the color of the shadows as well. Let me zoom into an area that has some parts in the shade. The part of the ramp in black would represent the shadows and the white part would be the main diffuse color. So if I move the marker to the right or to the left, more of the surface would be treated as a shadow or less of the surface. We can also change the color of the shadow, or even use a texture map. I'll go ahead and set it to a darker shade of brown. We can add multiple markers on the ramp as well. If I right click on the ramp and choose the add key option, that will place a new marker. This way I can introduce more complexity to the shading of the surface and make it more interesting to look at. So instead of using just a flat color, let me plug in a simple gradient ramp node consisting of just a bunch of horizontal lines. As you can see, this makes the shadows look a little bit more interesting. You can experiment further on your own and achieve all sorts of interesting looks. For now, I'll stick with this one. Even though we are going for a cartoon style, it's important to be able to distinguish the different types of materials. For instance, the surface of the van should be metal or some sort of car paint, which means that needs to be rather reflective. Let's introduce a little bit of reflectivity and also start to lower the gloss value until we start to see the highlights. By moving the marker on the specular ramp, we can see more or less of the highlights. Using the same approach as with the diffuse ramp, we can add another marker and either map it with a different color or use a texture map. I have a texture map of horizontal lines I'd like to use, but to make it more interesting, I'd like to create a sort of a crisscross pattern. So I'll duplicate the texture and rotate it 90 degrees, 
so the lines go vertical. Then I'll simply add the two textures together using a V-Ray Comp text node and set it to add. After that, I can simply plug it into the specular map slot of the second marker. It looks a little too bright, so let me put a color correct note in between and lower its intensity. Now that looks much better. Using the same approach, we can create the material for the rest of the vans parts. For the sake of speed things up, I have already created those materials. Let me go ahead and apply them to their corresponding objects. Alright, great! Just like that we've managed to shade the entire scene, using simple V-Ray Tune materials. Now for the burger objects, I've used the same type of material and for the textures, I've used real photos of food, which I slightly modified in Photoshop. Let me show you how I did it. So, for the purpose of this, we'll need some images of bread, vegetables and so on, which you can find online or photograph those objects yourself. After that, we can open them in Photoshop or another image editing program. Under Filter, open Filter Gallery and there are a bunch of different filter effects. I've played around with most of them and discovered that in my case the cutout filter gives me the best results. You can find it under Artistic cut out. And here you can play around with different sliders until you're happy with what you see. I've used this method on all of the burger textures. Alright, now that we have everything all shaded and ready to go, we can simply do a final render. I'll just leave all of the render settings to their default values and hit the render button. In this video, we've gone through the process of shading a scene in a cell shaded or cartoon style. We've explored the V-Ray Tune material and some of its strengths and uses. We've also looked at how to add and control an outline around objects to emphasize on the comic style look. And finally, we've looked at how we can use actual photographs as textures and make them look more stylized. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and helpful. Thank you for watching. <laughs>